Hello and welcome to Rock the Casbah Block 12. My name is Julie Hall and I'm so happy to be able to bring you this fantastic quilt collection. Today we're going to be looking at Block 12 of the Rock the Casbah and you can see that we're going to start off with some beautiful stitching and then go on to applique and over stitching. One of the things that I love about this block, and I'm just trying to zoom in enough to show you, is that beautiful um, decorative stitch that we've got here, and also the quilting design. And I just want to see if you can catch the details of that. I call this one the pendulum design and remember that as well as getting the entire block you also get the block as a quilting design and you get it as a continuous quilting design as well so that you can create edge to edge quilting. As always you are going to need your embroiderer's felt um, your 100% cotton fabric, you are going to need wash away thread, you are going to need four colours of embroidery thread to match your fabrics, wadding and backing. All of the requirements are on the instruction guide that is included with the collection. So let's get started. And to begin with, we are going to take our embroiderer's felt and our cutaway stabiliser. Lay the embroiderer's felt on top of your stabiliser and stitch out colourway one. What this is going to do is it is going to hold down that first layer of fabric. We use wash away thread for this so that there are not multiple threads left in the project once we complete the project. Now here I'm using a pair of straight edged scissors, uh, sorry curved tip scissors but quite large ones to come through and trim away all of that excess embroiderer's felt. We want to do this so that you don't end up with really bulky seams. It's important to prep each block carefully so that you end up with the best possible choice at the end or best possible block at the end. Now take your 100% cotton fabric that's been lightly starched, put it back onto the machine and still with the wash away thread in the machine stitch out colourway 2. What happens when we stitch our blocks is that the embroidery sucks the fabric into a degree. So the reason that we're using wash away thread is simply so that when we get to the end of our block and we do the quilting and we put it all together and we, um, we come to looking at the design, there isn't an extra row of stitching there. And now I've threaded my machine up to with the deep pink colour thread and I'm going to stitch colourway 3 which is going to stitch the detail onto the block. This detail is a diamond like pattern and diamonds are a recurring theme with this block. So we've got, <clears throat> excuse me there, we've got an open weave diamond pattern here and then we come through and we do a back stitch around just to finish that stitching off. Now it looks like my th stitching is going at a really fast pace. Um, don't be too concerned. I was actually stitching at uh, five to six hundred stitches per minute when I stitched this block. I speed it up on the video so that you don't get bored. Um, please do not think that you have to stitch at an incredibly sh um, high speed. As a general rule, I think slower is better. 
Now, this is actually one of the longer blocks within this collection. And the reason for that is that there are 27 colour changes or actions. Whenever there's a colour change, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to change the thread. It means that you have to do something. And most of those relates back to the applique that we are going to do on our design. Okay, so still stitching my decorative pink colour here. And we'll come through and we've got one last, and I, I kind of, I refer to these guys as orange segments um, or teardrops, just because that's kind of what they remind me of. And... Once we've done that, we are going to move on to some applique. So the way this, or the way that all of our quilt blocks are created, is by layering. So we must do this stitching first, so that now as we come through, and I've changed to a wine-coloured thread, even though I am laying down. Um, medium teal color fabric and that will all become um you'll understand why in a moment now i'm being quite stingy with my fabric here i'm trying to use up the smallest amount that i possibly can it is about to bite me in the ass and you will see exactly why as we go through this but i enjoy leaving these mistakes in here so that you can ideally do better than i so we're laying down all of our applique fabrics first and we are now up to colorway nine Just laying it down and then trimming away. And this is colorway 11. And once we've done this bit here, colorway 12 is going to do a decorative satin stitch on top of that applique. And because we're doing that in the wine colored thread, it made sense to use um, to use that wine thread and it saves us just having to change our colors that little bit more I, I kind of not quite sure what to call the elements that we're stitching here in satin they they have a real Islamic or Turkish they kind of look almost like lettering um, but I've always been a huge fan of Moroccan tiles and I'm so happy with the way this project has come together. Now, you'll see we're going to do one block at a time, just coming along. While we are doing um, the stitching of this, it's also a great time to prep your backing fabric and your wadding. Uh, so I like to come through and just make sure that my wadding is firmly ironed and pressed, ready to go under the block at the completion of the stitching. You don't have to quilt through your blocks. This is a quilt as you go project. You don't have to do that if you don't wish to. Um, it is totally up to you. If you want to just put your blocks together and then finish it as a regular quilt, you can certainly do that. And you would do that um, using just by stopping at the um, once the stitching is complete and before you would be laying your wadding down. And this stitching is a beautiful satin stitch. One of the things that I love with embroidery is using texture. And I think quilting adds to texture. And I think whatever stitches you use adds to texture as well. I'm an absolutely terrible person to take to a um, um, museum because I'm worse than the children at touching things as we go. 
Murphy's Law says you are going to run out of thread at the worst possible time. How about you guys? I am a bit of a demon when it comes to my bobbins. I like to use them up 100%. So it does mean that I end up sometimes stopping in the middle of a project, um, but I can't handle having these bobbins with this just little bits around them. Okay, so that stitching of Colorway 12 is now complete and we're back to applique. So I'm going to thread up with my dark teal coloured thread and stitch out Colorway 13 to show where the applique fabric is going to go. Now, this is where I have stuffed up my block. And basically, I've just run out of time to restitch it before I showed it to you. But what you will notice as we go along here is that in two particular places, I have cut it a little bit too close and haven't totally covered my applique fabric over the outline. And you can see one of those places right there. So it is colorway, that is colorway 16 that we're just doing there and then we'll trim away and you can see like it's very very clear to me watching this back that I've just missed that part. Now if you do end up with an issue such as that there are a couple of things you can do. You can come back and you, I could redo the applique of that part. Once again, I was a little bit too lazy to do that. Um, live and learn as you go along, it does matter. The other thing that I can do now that my stitching is finished is I can set my sewing machine to regular sewing, um, choose a stitch that is about the same and cover that area with um, the same outline stitching just to make sure I'm holding everything down. Okay, so we are now up to colour weight 20. Time does fly when you're having fun people. And I love how these colours work together. And what we're now going to do is begin the decorative stitching. So the inner stitching of the block is a satin stitch. It is a nice luscious thick satin stitch and what it does is it does an underlay to support those stitches before it does the satin and then it does stitching around the satin stitching to finish off the design. Then we are coming through and you can see it's doing the, um, the triple stitching around that now. And now it's going to come through and it's going to start a um, diamond pattern. So I'm really playing with this block with the whole concept of squares and diamonds. Thread breakage is of course going to happen. Um, when your thread does break, always go back a couple more stitches than you really think you need to. It will be worth it in the end. Okay, and you can see the decorative stitching we've got going on here. That is all looking lovely. And that's now going to repeat for the other three parts of this block. So we've got our satin. As you can see here, this is it's always the it's always either um, rain, hail, or shine, isn't it, people? I can never um, sort of get it right. Like if one thing's going to go wrong, if you're going to um, break a thread, it's going to happen a couple of times through the block. It seems. 
Now, the other reason that I ended up with a little bit of showing on this particular arc is because the satin goes first, that does suck the edges in of that fabric just that little bit. And that is meaning that we are just not quite covering that edge. But there are always ways around things and we're going to pretend that I've done this deliberately as a teaching method. Okay. So we are stitching through and through here. And so what I'm, one of the things I would love is for anybody who has done any of the first couple of blocks, send us some pictures, show us what colors you're using. I really do love the idea of seeing different people's ideas of um, of what works together. I am not very adventurous when it comes to colour. So I love seeing other people's ideas. And you never know when your idea is going to inspire somebody else. So we're back doing the satin stitching here. And we'll come through. So this is colorway 21. It's probably the longest um, individual set of um, stitches throughout the project. And an interesting fact on this one is they reckon this set of stitching is going to use up 70 meters of thread. So that's about dark teal and it's 70 meters. I don't know about you guys, but I was always um, fascinated when I first when I got my first embroidery machine by just how little thread you actually used. I had expected to use um, much more thread than I ever did. It was um, because the first project I did was a Winnie the Pooh quilt that I digitized using um, using coloring in books and I did this for my niece and we like I bought three spools of the Winnie the Pooh orange didn't even use a single spool with this one you are going to want to have at least a thousand meters I'd probably recommend maybe 2,000 meters of thread just to get you started <coughs> excuse me okay and we're on the last part of stitching with this color now So we're going to come through and it's going to do the stitching around. When it comes to the quilting of your design, you can choose whether you want to use cotton or embroidery thread. It really is totally up to you. I have chosen to use embroidery thread um, and I've chosen to use bobbin fill on the back because it is strong enough for the purpose. Okay, and one more broken thread before we go. Yes, yeah, so at that point you're like, nearly finished, nearly finished, nearly finished. And now we are up to colorway 22. And colorway 22 is going to stitch a circle in the center of our block. And using my wine colored fabric, I'm gonna come through 
and stitch out then colorway 23 which will stitch two circles onto that fabric to secure the fabric and you'll see here I'm trimming around the outside and then using my curved tip scissors my really sharp small ones I'm coming in and cutting out the middle of that block as well before we move on to colorway 24 which is giving us the satin stitching around those two circles a lot of people um, have asked can I rearrange the colors to make it less color changes the I mean physically you can do anything will it work no um, this has all been very specifically thought out so that um, different pieces of applique cover up different pieces of stitching so that you get the best look in the design at the end um, and because of that I recommend people absolutely sticking to the colorways as we have set them out and after this block I will be changing my needle generally speaking if you get a lot of thread breaks anything like that that's a um, good way of saying to start thinking about your needle okay we're almost finished our stitching here and we're going to get ready to put our backing on so take your wadding and I'm just using a polyester wadding here lay it over the back of the project and stitch colorway 25 to secure it then you want to come through and again with those slightly larger scissors trim away all the excess so that it is not caught in your seams lay the um, quilt backing on the back of the design and then come through and stitch colorway 26 which is going to hold down the backing and again both 25 and 26 are with your wash away thread now change away from the wash away thread to your quilting thread remembering I've used um, a polyester embroidery thread for mine and we are going to start our quilting this quilting design is um, one that I've called pendulum and I just really love the yin and yang sort of look to it you'll also notice that I have used t-pins here to hold my stabilizer in place t-pins are great for holding the stabilizer and helping it to stop moving and sucking in um, when you are using a cutaway if you are using a tearaway I find it makes no difference whatsoever because the t-pin will just tear through the tearaway if it needs to move So your all over quilting design is of course custom it comes through and it goes around the quilting elements and we're about three quarters of the way through now and you can just see how much that makes the block pop And here you can see our final block you can see the quiltings looking gorgeous there um, I will go through and just add that little bit of final stitching to cover up where I've made those mistakes but I'm so happy with the look of it join us next time for the next block in the rock the casbah collection until then bye